So I'm continuing with the video. We're talking about forgiveness. Um, I was I asked three the three different things I wanted to talk about. Let me take a sip of water. Um, one of the things about forgiveness is, do when I forgive somebody, do I have to bring them back into my bosom? When I do I do I have to do I only forgive if they ask for forgiveness okay there are people and <laughs> let me tell you i've seen evil in my life i've seen evil people evil people i've seen vicious people mean narcissists anything you can think of um angry just Bitter, 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 bitter. Their whole life is vile. Um, I've seen some ugliness in my life. And I will say this, by the, according to scripture, and let me read this scripture for you. Colossians 3. Um, Colossians 3 and 12. I'm going to read from 12, okay? Colossians 3 and 12. Therefore, as the elect of God. Who's the elect of God? Raise your hand, you too. Holy and beloved, put on, put on, put it on. It's a part of, make it a part of you. Tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another if anyone has a complaint against another even as Christ forgave you so you also must must is means it's an imperative must it's not an option it's not what well, if I feel like it it's not well you know we'll see it's a must if you're going to live according to the word and come according to be obedient um, obedience to Christ but above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your heart. So here's the thing. Why I say, over the years, it's baffled me in different churches where I, 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 I see um, people together. Everybody is a Christian, but you only talk to those people. And we don't mingle here. We, we don't talk to each other except for when we come to church if we do um before the pastor says amen the benediction we're running towards the parking lot um we don't share what's going on with us uh you know in the scripture the scripture says um i don't want to misquote where is it is it corinthians but the scripture that says that it's Corinthians, Corinthians, where if, if, if you are, we are members of one single body. We're one single body. So the Bible says, if you are hurting, everybody's hurting. If you're happy, every one of us are happy right now. Because we're one, and he uses the body as an analogy. Okay? This is the body of Christ, meaning all of us together make one body, right? So the finger, this finger needs my eyes. My eyes need my ear. My ear needs my feet. We are one. Here's the thing with the body. If this finger, if right now I slam this finger in a door, oh, trust me. The bulk of the pain, and I've done that before. I crushed my fingers in, um, when I was an EMT. I slammed the ambulance door. Do not ask me how my hand was right there. And I slammed the ambulance door on my own hand. And an ambulance door is heavier than most car doors. And I slammed it. And it actually locked. And then I pulled my finger out. He heard. <laughs> Nothing was broken. Um, but let me tell you something. The pain was not just in my... It was this hand, in these fingers. The pain was everywhere. <laughs> I think my eyelash was hurting. Um, but... But when one hurt, everybody hurts. Now, most of us, because we don't have any love, you don't even know I'm hurting sitting right next to you. And even if I tell you, you're like, oh, that's, oh, okay. Or we'll say things like, okay, I'll keep you in prayer. Do you really? <laughs> Did you really? <laughs> now, I'm not saying that nobody ever, I'm just saying typically 
we don't we don't hurt when somebody else hurt. We're not rejoicing. I've had people, and this, <laughs> I'm one of those people, I'm a grown woman with sometimes the mind of a 13 year old girl or even younger. And I get excited. I don't get excited. Like some people get excited. It's like, oh, <laughs> when I get excited, a baby has nothing on me. I get like silly excited. When I think comes to the things of God, I am simply ridiculous. It's no holds barred. And I start going about, oh, and then, and then the Lord, and then, and, and then, oh, 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 and I'm rattling on to people and I'm telling them what God did. I'm not saying it to brag. I'm saying it to, if I'm bragging, I'm bragging on Christ, like Paul said. And a lot of time, because I'm so excited like a child, and I'll confess, like a child, I am not paying attention to the individual or individuals to whom I'm speaking. And I'm not going to lie. Talking about this kind of breaks my heart a little bit. Because it's more than one person that I've had this experience with. So when I'm saying it, what I'm expecting that person to say is, whoa, oh my gosh, I know he's a good God. And I want them to rejoice back with me. But I've had occasion, many occasion, that I did not notice. One day, for some strange reason, I think maybe God wanted me to see something. I was beginning to feel a certain thing around this individual that every time I would get excited and share with this person it wasn't it was more like a you know a lot just platitude just kind of oh that's yeah amen yeah that's nice and i would think oh man isn't she excited isn't he excited aren't they excited and one day i was doing one of my carrying on like a child about something that god did oh, 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 oh. and I just happened to turn and look at the individual on the face. On the individual spoke volumes. It's as if the individual saw me as bragging. And so I, I noticed that within me, and I'm not saying I'm right for doing this. I've noticed that within me, I no longer share with everybody. Unless it's a stranger. <laughs> I feel like the stranger needs it anyway more because the sick doesn't need a doctor. I'm sorry, the healthy doesn't need a doctor, the sick does. So I find that I mostly share now with people who don't, you know, out in the world or a Christian that I've never, I've, I've never met her, him or her before. And they're excited. They're not hearing me brag. They're hearing how good God is. You see what I'm saying? And it's because there's something in some of us where we can't see a person as a, we can't see in love that person as a part of the body. We see them as individual. We see me over here. I serve God in my way and you over there, you serve God in your way. But he prayed in, 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 in John 17 and he spoke of it in John 16 uh, that we should love one another. But it's impossible to love if you can't forgive. If you have unforgiveness in your heart, you can't, it's impossible for you, Colossians 3 and 12, all the way down, you can go all the way down uh, to um, 17, but it's impossible for you. If you cannot forgive, you cannot have tender mercies, you cannot be have kindness, you cannot have humility, you cannot have meekness, you cannot have, have long suffering, you cannot bear with one another, and you cannot forgive one another um, as Christ forgave you. And you definitely cannot love. You cannot love. It doesn't matter to me. You know, we have certain things that we do. Like I remember growing up in New York, it was, you know, phone, it's like, have a nice day. You walk into a building, have a nice day. And I always, I used to look back and just smile to myself. Do you really mean that? And when somebody said to you, how you doing? They don't really mean for you to tell them how you doing. <laughs> and I made a mistake one time to start up with a try. I mean, yeah, when you ask something, I'm going to tell. And the person looked at me like, <laughs> 
it's impossible for you no matter how many yeah love you girl hey yeah man love you man if you cannot forgive that is not real you cannot have unforgiveness you cannot have unforgiveness and love it oil and water it doesn't go together it's completely impossible this is why you can't forgive so when you forgive somebody do you have to bring them back into your bosom there are people that you forgive and you bring them back into your bosom you even put them back in you you even put them back in the same position let me tell you something about human nature that we should all know when we feel threatened we are like a rat trapped in a corner or a that nasty little creature with a raccoon Ugh. okay we will fight to the death to the death you understand me and when people are angry a lot of times when people are angry it it, it, it sounds like anger but it's really fear it's really fear and when those things happen and being trapped or being fearful things come out of people's mouth now i'm not saying it's okay i've had people say things to me it's like whoa but it, it it's a lot of times the reason you know like i said somebody asked me one time why do you forgive this person who did something really bad to me why i don't understand why you forgive this person because this individual is human just like you and it's funny because the person was asking me how could I forget I'm looking at this uh, him it was a male and I'm like the things you have the things you have done you're asking me and I had to forgive you you're asking me why could I for, why did I forgive her are you kidding me right now right so when we are trapped or scared we say things sometimes we even do things i've seen so many times i've never done it but it happens every time where i've seen and i know i did it when i was a girl but i whispered it in my head when i was a little girl eight year old nine year old and i would get a spanking and my dad would or my dad would get upset about i'm like hate you but i never said it out loud but i watch other kids yell out to their their mom and dad i hate you and run to the room and slam the door i never went that far I said it in my head but i know even though i hear that teenager yell that i hate you i know that that teenager does not mean it i don't you don't if you're a parent of a teenager or a child it doesn't i guess it doesn't matter the age now do not internalize that a husband or wife sometimes they do that too because there's a lot of immaturity in adults but the one, the first thing they yell, I hate you, because they didn't get what they want. Do not internalize those words. And that's what we do. We internalize. Why do we internalize things? Because we're hurt and crushed already. That person's yelling is hurt and crushed. And now everybody's yelling and trying to out hurt the other person. And then tomorrow everybody wakes up. If you have a heart, you wake up and it's like, oh my God, what did I say? What did I say? What did I say? Right? So you have to be careful what you're internalizing. There are people who say something mean or even do something and you forgive them and you put them right back in their, in their position. Let's deal with the prodigal son. Let's deal with the prodigal son. The father didn't say, well, look what you did. You're gonna have to sleep in the guest, you know, house, in the house in the back with the servants now. He brought him in as if he has never done anything wrong, okay? We're gonna go to another video. We're gonna continue this. Thank you so much for bearing with me. God bless you.